Yes, hello and thank you, uh, Scott. Um, uh, hello, everybody, once more from my side. Um, I'm glad you were interested in uh, learning about our uh, industry solution for heritage, points and heritage. My name is Jana Siebenroth. I'm the product manager for this software, and I will guide you through the next uh, about 60 minutes on that software package. <clears throat> First of all, uh, to, to give you an idea where uh, in the laser scanning process um, um, points and heritage is placed. Um, first of all, you capture your scans uh, on site, scan your object from different positions, and then in the office you will go on and register the individual scan positions into one common reference system. And you will also pre-process your scan data by cleaning and filtering it. And all this is done in some pre-processing tool like Scene or uh, Cloudworks or uh, Trimble Realworks, etc. And then later on you will go on and post-process the scan, scan data and you start interpreting and uh, modeling the scans in your design tool. And um, today we are talking about AutoCAD and um, our points and heritage is a plugin inside AutoCAD. And uh, of course, um, you can get your um, scan data from your pre-processing tool. Uh, if you have seen, you can directly export uh, RCP or RCS files, which is the Autodesk point cloud format um, that can be attached to AutoCAD drawings, or you can use uh, Autodesk Recap in order to create RCP or RCS files from from your uh, scan formats if you have. Uh, like a scanner and using Cloudworks. Um, with points and heritage, you can not only use um, scans, but also photographs, but I will come to that in a few minutes. First of all, to give you an idea of what points and heritage is or what it's meant for, it is uh, it provides tools for users in the field of archaeology and historic preservation, which help you to create your typical deliverables like image plans, layout plans, elevations, sections, and even 3D models for the documentation of either historical buildings or archaeological excavations. And all this is done inside your familiar AutoCAD environment, if AutoCAD is um, familiar to you. Um, native AutoCAD does already provide some uh, point cloud tools uh, for displaying the point cloud in different color options. It provides tools for cropping and sectioning and also for snapping to the point cloud. But with our PointSense products, there are multiple features added, like in um, Points and the Points and Heritage package comprises uh, the features of Points and Basic and Points and Pro, so it also com uh, contains um, auto image um, uh, functionality or, um, or the scan navigation tool as well as the scan manager, and also uh, some more pattern recognition tools from the Points and Pro product. Um, and it adds to those uh, points and basic points and pro features. It also adds um, tools to evaluate the point clouds together with photos in order to unwrap uh, photographs and point clouds to to the plane to get nice true to scale image plans. All right, and um, your benefits from using. Uh, points in heritage are you get a richer detail by combining laser scans and photographs and you can concentrate on the essential by clipping and coloring the point clouds. Um, as I already mentioned, it adds numerous tools for modeling and analyzing inside your familiar CAD and of course you can create true to scale image plans by unwinding an auto projection of point clouds and photographs. It also has uh, some intuitive uh, navigation tools um, for navigating your scan data while uh, processing it. 
So let's come to, to the functionality in more detail. You can, of course, clip your point clouds in order to remove obstacles or to crop to your areas of interest. And you can define slices, uh, thin sections, in order to digitize profiles or layout plans, as well as elevations. This is symbolized here on the left-hand side. A new tool in version 16.5 is um, the possibility to define a horizontal slice at a defined elevation. This is useful for, for architects. There's sometimes they have the restriction to create a floor plan uh, for, for the building cut at a certain elevation, for instance, at one meter level. Then, as already mentioned, you can colorize your point clouds in order to create colorful elevation maps or um, to visualize areas of your point cloud thematically, for instance, if you want to color by age or by certain materials. Um, then we have plenty tools for modeling and analyzing surfaces. So we have pattern recognition of uh, polygons and lines, which you can then use for a combination with native AutoCAD tools for 3D modeling. <clears throat> we also have pattern recognition for cylinders. You can fit up a cylinder by only two clicks. And we have pattern recognition for planar faces in point clouds, where you can fit the plane by just one click in the point cloud. Um, a new feature in version 16.5 is um, the feature for simultaneously fitting multiple polygons. Um, that be, makes um, processing of the point cloud even more efficient. It speeds up the creation of cross sections, e.g., for, for instance, for catacombs, or the generation of contour lines. Um, you also have the option to uh, automatically create solids uh, with this tool. And here is how it works. You first uh, use the multi slice command. To, to create the profiles of the point cloud, and then uh, the algorithm, algorithm fits uh, polygons to those slices. And if you have enabled the option for creating a solid, you will get a solid as well. Um, let me just demonstrate um, so you get a better pr um, impression on the workflow. So in this um, example, I, I have uh, already um, created the slices by running the define multiple slices command. You can see that those slice sections in the section manager already. I will just turn off the all, all points uh, um, section. And if I zoom in here a little bit further, you can see um, that the multiple slice command has defined uh, slices at defined um, distance and uh, defined uh, slice thickness. And I can now use those those slices um, to run the multiple uh, profile command, multiple polyline command. I can select one slice here and I can isolate it. And um, if I now create a polygon first, I can fit a polygon with a variable number of vertices. Need to sw switch to the top view first. And this command um, allows me to roughly um, click an approximate uh, polygon, like I'm doing right now. See very quickly, and I'll just close it, hit a button, and the algorithm will fit this uh, approximation to my point cloud slice, which I, and, and this, uh, this uh, polygon I can then use as starting point for fitting um, the polygon in all in more um, point cloud slices. So I will just won't select all um, 50 of them. I will just for you to show how it w it's working. I will s enable just five um, slices. So um, the following command is um, the fit polygons in multiple slices command. It will fit polygons to all those uh, uh, slice sections which I've uh, switched visible in the 
in, in the section manager. So I ru run the command and I'll have to select an approximate, um, an approximate polygon, a starting point. Um, I'll go to select objects and select what I've just created. Um, and then I would could check the option to add more uh, points to the polyline I've just selected uh, with some more detailing and I could also uh, check the option to create the solid surface but for us not having to wait too long um, I would just hit OK right now and you can see what happens um, you can see that the polygon fitting is going on and um, the algorithm automatically switches through those um, sections I have selected and fits the polygons to, to the uh, outline of the of the point cloud there. Um, last slice I think. Okay and you can imagine that this way you can either create cross-section profiles or um, contour lines very quickly um, just um, to give you an impression how the result might look like if I have selected all the all the point cloud slices. So here are the cross-section profiles for the complete uh, tower top. And if I uh, check the option to create a solid, um, you will even get. Um, well, let me switch off the the point cloud here. you can see that uh, a solid has been created automatically as well. All right, I think it gives you an idea um, how this um, um, new tool in uh, version 16.5 is working. Um, we have more tools for, for modeling um, surfaces and also for analyzing surfaces. Next tool is um, a tool for flatness analysis or plane analysis. This is a very powerful tool not only for solid modeling but for uh, in the field of heritage and ar archaeology. Uh, solid modeling option will be of most interest for you I guess. Um, but you can also use it for volumetric calculation and uh, also for analysis of deformations of planar objects and it's also suitable for terrain modeling. So this tool is not only included in our points and heritage uh, solution but also in points and pro and there was uh, also in the industry solutions like points and plant and points and building. Here is an example how um, a terrain model has been created using this tool. Um, you can control the accuracy of the results by setting parameters in the in the parameters dialog and um, you can have options to create uh, to to display the deviations from from the uh, reference plane in an exaggerated scale um, you have you can flexibly um, choose the reference plane and the grid alignment and it's you who defines the which results you want to produce using the um, flatness analysis tool. Let me give you uh, an idea, a rough idea about the workflow. I have a brick wall here. It's, it has only been scanned from one side. I've already used um, the plane uh, fitting tools in order to fit the plane to uh, a reference plane to the wall and I have uh, already moved it a little bit further from, from the surface because I want to model uh, the wall in 3D and I can now run the plane analysis tool. I have to select a plane as reference surface. Um, all right. And um, then there's there are parameters that I can set so I can um, tell the software how far from the reference plate I want to take the points of the point cloud into account. Here's the option for exaggerated scale if I want if I'm interested in the deviations it makes sense if I'm interested in a 
in a solid close to the real world, then I would have to leave it to one, which I will do. And then there is uh, the grid size. With with defining the grid size, you uh, define the the resolution of your model as well as the, re the resolution of your um, the deformation analysis. And you will always can always check how many cells will be um, calculated for deformation analysis. If I say OK, I will get a warning because quite a num huge number of cells. Um, I say OK anyway. And on the right hand side, you can check whether you want to create a solid model or whether you just want to create a polyline grid with the deviations um, or a grid of points. Where where you then can, uh, which you then also can use in, in, in civil 3D, or if you want to create a point cloud, point cloud creation is meant that that the deviation values, deviation from the reference plane, are written into the intensity column of your po new point cloud, and this way you can colorize by intensity, but it's not the intensity, but the deviation that's displayed in colors. Um, let me show you the results here. Um, I have prepared those for you, and um, if I uh, turn out the po turn off the point cloud for once in the in the plane as well. Um, so um, here's uh, here's how the solid that's been created will look like. Um, I think this has been created with five centimeters uh, uh, cell grid, so it's not very detailed, but uh, uh, good enough to to recognize it as a brick wall. Um, another um, result you can create with this tool is um, you can create this um, devi uh, deviation grid, which I've mentioned, and it's con consisting of 3D polylines as a grid. And at the nodes of the grid, um, we have a text that uh, tells us the deviation from the reference plane. And if I turn on the point cloud once more, I can um, select the point cloud. And as our algorithm rhythm has written the deviation values to the intensity column of the point cloud, um, I can colorize by deviation. And I've also already prepared a legend. Um, you can create a legend with using this uh, legend tool in the second section manager, zoom out, you have a nice um, a deviation map with a legend added um, to it. I think you, that gives you an idea how you can use the plane analysis tool not only for creating terrain models but also for creating models of other um, plane-like surfaces. Um, let me show you a few more tools of points and heritage. There are uh, tools for anal analyzing cylinder-shaped and conical-shaped objects, like like this uh, tower over here on the left-hand side. Um, th with this tool, you can unwind point the point clouds for easier analysis, and uh, you get you can also get a color-coded unwrapped point cloud color-coded by deviation, and um, as mentioned already in the points and plant se section, um, you can create reports and export the data to Excel and ASCII formats. I think this this option is more of interest for tank analysis, I think, in, in the field of heritage and archaeology, the really the, the modeling option, the creation, the option to create solids is of more interest with this tool here. Um, to give you a rough idea um, how this tool can be used with a conical shaped object like like at this um, tower, um, you can fit um, uh, for some conical here to the point cloud by snapping a few points and uh, then um, the algorithm uses the ideal cone um, in order to calculate the deviations and to model the deviation from this ideal cone. Here, let me switch now um, 
the the command has been started and it's working very similar to what I've shown you with a uh, with a planner surface. So let me jump a little bit further. You ha again have a lot of lots of parameters to be set and the choice um, of the results you want to create. And uh, yeah, let me switch further forward. In the end, you will get uh, a solid, or if you've checked, you can get a deviation grid and the colored point cloud in the end. So um, that's what you can do with this uh, cylinder or conical analysis tools. Of course, you can also calculate volumes at different intervals. Um, then, um, as mentioned, Poinsen's heritage does not only uh, use the point clouds, but also uh, photographs for for uh, creating um, 3D models or uh, image plans. Um, in Poinsen's heritage, we do have uh, tools for manually orientated photographs. That means uh, um, calculate the um, position of the camera during the shot and not only the position but also the direction and, and the um, focal length. Um, so we have manual tools to do that using uh, control points, but um, there are, we have also have options to import um, photo projects from Agisoft PhotoScan as well as Autodesk Recap Photo. And uh, we have those imports to give you a way for fast automatic image orientation rather than going the manual way. And um, those oriented images, they are used for multiple image processing for photogrammetry, but also for so-called monoplotting, where you click on the photograph and get a 3D coordinate on top of the point cloud. Um, and we can use those uh, uh, oriented images uh, for creating true-to-scale image plans uh, and author photos. So um, let me uh, oh yes, uh, in, in version 16.5, uh, the, the Agisoft PhotoScan project import is, is uh, new. And uh, mm, like I said, we can use multiple image photogrammetry. If we don't want to scan the object or don't have the option to scan the object, we can take photographs around the object to create a point cloud and uh, to and also to model uh, from directly from the photographs in 3D. Um, so we can drive highly struck uh, um, facade plans of highly structured facades, but we can also model 3D, like you can see on, on the lower right here. Um, we need at least two oriented images of an object which o have enough overlap so we can calculate 3D coordinate. A new tool in Points and Heritage is the new image management um, that helps us to easily work with multiple oriented images. It sim simplifies the setting up of viewports for multiple image processing. Swapping the photos to be processed is now a child's play with this new tool. And this tool is perfectly suited to process photos from large photo projects like from Agisoft PhotoScan or from Recap Photo. And to give you an idea what I'm talking about, uh, I will jump into AutoCAD and demonstrate how this uh, uh, um, photogrammetry tools are working. We have here not a laser scan, but a point cloud that has been created by Agisoft PhotoScan using uh, photographs only. And zooming in here, you can see that the, the edges of, of this um, window over here, they are quite um, yeah, uh, fuzzy. Um, that's due to the um, photo resolution. Um, but what I can do now, I can um, um, just fit a plane here, a facade plane, to, to that point cloud to give me an, something to be able to draw on later. And um, I hit OK, you can see uh, the points I've collected and you can see the, the mean and 
the maximum di distance of those points from their average plane. If I hit OK, the plane is now created and I will also um, switch uh, the user coordinate system to that plane. Um, now still the point cloud is very uh, is not very dense so I will turn it off here and I will just run the new um, image management command. Oh by the way um, I have already imported um, Agisoft PhotoScan project which I will now use with the image management tool so I will start the image man management here um, and you see the, the, the list of images is still empty but I will now select the, the I will just select the um, folder where I have imported my uh, Agisoft PhotoScan project to. This is the folder and uh, if I switch back to the image list I have now all the photographs that have been used to create the point cloud which was visible before and with the image management tool I can now set up uh, viewports very quickly and I want to have want to see my model on the right hand side so I don't want to hide the model behind any photographs and I set the left viewport uh, to camera navigation mode and now I just need to select the photograph I want to draw on just by double clicking in the in the image list and you can see um, the geometry in, in the foreground and the photograph in the background and you see with the photograph I have much sharper uh, edges which I can now digitize. Before I start digitizing I would just um, turn off the cubit plane layer and turn on my digi digitization layer which is green and for you easier to recognize. And since I have uh, created a plane uh, already I can directly use um, uh, the AutoCAD commands so I don't have to switch back and forth between uh, different photographs right now. So I will just create an arc here and create an arc on the other side and um, and uh, let me just draw a polyline to complement this here. And this way um, I could continue around the window and then start digitizing the rest of the facade to get a nice facade plan. plan. Uh, but what I li would like to show you as well is how you can use these uh, elements to, um, to extrude them. So I select them and run the ex extrude command. You see the, the object is now snapped to my, my mouse uh, cursor. I will switch back to the camera navigation window but uh, I will select a different photograph to, to get a nicer, uh, better view of the, of the window to see the depth of that, um, of that frame over here and to fit my 3D model exactly to the depth of this part and I have it here I have it now in here in 3D and if I turn off the, the image manager and switch on the point cloud once more um, I have to switch back here to uh, 3D um, visualization style to see the, the point cloud and let me go back in here to turn off to unload the, the image so I right click and I um, scale that image to, to a smaller um, visualization so um, here we can see that um, the new th uh, the model the model I've created by using the photograph really fits into the point cloud that has been created with those photographs previously but 
I get a much more exact shape than I would get when I model this point cloud. Um, so here, um, here we see another example. There is no point cloud derived from those photographs. I just used those two photographs, switching back and forth between the two of them, and uh, created first a 3D uh, facade plan. And then I just need, if I really want, just want the facade plan, I can run the flatten command and uh, um, select the objects and. Um, flatten those objects to to the facade to the main facade plan plane and here you can now see uh, the result and I could could now use again use AutoCAD commands to to annotate with distances and uh, um, other annotations okay let me go back into the presentation um, the, the monoplotting tool of Points and Heritage is meant for drawing on a high resolution oriented photograph. Um, that's useful if, if your scan is not as dense as, as a photograph can be. And the 3D ge geometry is directly generated on top of, of the point cloud. So it's very similar what, to what I have just presented to you, but um, rather than having to create a, a plane to draw on, um, I can just select the, the point cloud itself as a surface and then um, the software calculates the, the intersection between the, the image ray and the surface and this way it, we are able to click in the image and draw directly on top of the point cloud. So this is just another approach, this monoplotting. Um, <clears throat> Then we have tools to create author photos and true author photos um, inside Points and Heritage. Uh, a true author photo can give you a much denser image information than, than the normal author image uh, function will give you. And as author images as well as true author footage, photos can be used as image plans because everything that's per parallel to the image plane is projected through to scale, but only those things which are parallel to the projection plane. So um, if you have facades with a lot of uh, planar surfaces which are parallel to each other, you would uh, fit a main plane and then everything uh, and use this as image plane. Um, if you have other facade shapes like like you can see in the sketch down here, you would rather like to unwind um, the, the point cloud or photographs in order to get an image plan. So you can unwind point clouds as well as photos of towers, walls, facades, ceilings, frescoes and more um, into the plane uh, for digitizing an evaluating details on top of the resulting image and to measure true length. Because if you would create an ortho image of those curved surfaces, for instance, you would never get true length uh, on top of those curved surfaces. You will only get shorter length. So this, this tool is very useful for, for true to scale image plans of curved surfaces. Um, here's an example of a tower same tower uh, we used the cylinder analysis tool to previously. Um, you will have to fit a cylinder to to the point cloud and use this cylinder that to be unrolled into the plane. But since this is very abstract, I would like to demonstrate this tool for you live in inside points in um, points in um, heritage. Here we have a scan of, of a tower um, and I use this uh, fit cylinder tool to fit the ideal cylinder to that uh, scan data. Um, the scans have been taken without colors but uh, there have been photographs taken in, into, in addition to that scan. 
to that laser scan and I will now use those photographs and the cylinder surface to unwrap uh, an image plan, to create an unwrapped image plan. Um, you can see that inside this uh, photo uh, oriented photograph we ha have a lot of sky and also trees so I would like to remove those parts of the image before I start the calculation. So I run clip the clipping command, select um, the photo and I will click points to crop the image to the area of the fitted ideal cylinder. All right. And finally close that polygon. Hit OK and you can see the, the, the image has been cropped to, to that uh, shape. Same has been already been done to the second image. So um, just for us to not, not to be confused by the point cloud, I would just um, go in here and use from the image computation uh, toolbox, I will use the unwrap cylinder tool. Uh, you can see we have options to unwrap other surfaces as well. Um, in the cylinder unwrap tool, I need to select the cylinder first, which is my projection surface. Um, I have, we have scanned the surf uh, and photographed the cylinder from the outside, so this is okay. And um, I can now use, have to select a reference point um, to tell the software from which point I want to do the unwrap click in here. And since I did not take any photographs, um, not, not from all around the tower, but only from one side, I would just select the option relative to the reference point. So that's the reason why I needed to define the reference point. And um, let me, let's unwrap uh, six meters left and right of this uh, reference point say OK and uh, now I just need to add the photographs to to the algorithm. Select both of them. We check. One is here and the other one is there and I have options to shift them in this list and I have several overlapping options and uh, you can see we can also uh, um, apply uh, automatic brightness corrections if we want to. Um, last, at the end I have to define a name and a format for my resulting image and say save. I can check, I can also check the resolution here and correct it a little bit. I could also select a different background color if I want to. When I keep it as white for the resulting image and then I just hit compute projection. Oh, yes, I want to overwrite the, the existing image and the algorithm uh, does calculate the unwound raster image from the, just using the information of the photographs. Um, this takes a few seconds, depending on, on, on the machine power and on the number of photographs this process may also take a little bit longer than than, he, than, than in this example. Um, the resulting image is now, uh, will now be placed close to the cylinder and um, as you will see, um, the software will ask me if I want to switch to the plan view. It also se then sets the, the um, user coordinate system to, to the image so I can directly use um, AutoCAD um, commands to uh, annotate my, my image plan. I would just um, I would just measure uh, the window width in here for you and put in another measure uh, for the width of this smaller part here and let me also annotate the, the height on window 
in here. Um, what I like to show you is I have prepared uh, from the same tower an example where we created an author image rather than uh, an, a true author photo rather than a an unwrapped image plan. And here you can see um, that in the author photo, the the width of the window is much shorter because it's not the true length, it's it's uh, shortened because of the ortho projection. While when unwinding it, the we have the true, um, we switch back, we have the true um, width of the window which is much wider. All right. I think that gives you an impression of the distant difference between uh, the, the, the unwinding and the ortho photo. So in those cases of curved shapes, uh, we will rather apply the unwrapping than, than creating ortho photos. Uh, already mentioned in, in relation to Poinsons plant and Poinsons building that we also Poinsons Heritage does have an enhanced visual interface with a scan navigation tool so you can intuitively navigate from the scanner's perspective inside AutoCAD. Um, it helps you to digitize without needing to crop your point cloud and it also helps you that you don't accidentally snap uh, background points. Um, you can you have a fast scan to scan navigation where we are those scan labels. Um, I would demonstrate it a little bit later. This uh, scan navigation tool is only available in AutoCAD 2015 and 2016. If you have older AutoCADs and want to use points and heritage, you can do so. Um, um, by using um, the planner uh, photo-like display, photorealistic display in a separate window, which gives you more intuitive navigation than inside the point cloud without scan navigation. Also here you don't accidentally snap hidden points. And uh, an advantage of this option is that you don't even have to load the point cloud in AutoCAD. This um, uh, photorealistic uh, planner view is provided in a separate window. Um, this separate window can be either VirtuSurf. The VirtuSurf license for sending into AutoCAD is included in the PointSense Heritage license. And uh, also included is the use, usage of the draw to cat app uh, inside scene. So if you are a Faro user and are using scene for for as pre-processing tool for for scan registration, you can directly use the planner view or the quick view of Faro scene in order to click points and send the coordinates into AutoCAD uh, and, and points in heritage. Um, let, let me go back one step back first. Uh, I like to, to show you um, the, the scan uh, navigation tool. Um, we have a small uh, scan project here and uh, to use the scan uh, navigation tool, you can create scan labels from your re recap project um, by just clicking this uh, button and then you can switch to the scan navigation by selecting the scan labels and uh, then you can move around from the scanner's perspective and start digitizing whatever you want, whatever you want to digitize. And you can navigate to the next um, scan position by selecting the next scan label and, uh, and moving around here. All right, of course you can always switch back 
switch off the scan navigation tool and all your scans are visible again and you can turn off those scan labels if, if they disturb you if they disturb your view. Um, um, do we still have some time? Yes, I think so. Um, I like to give you a brief overview of what's what's new in version 16.5 that just recently has been released. Um, Points and Heritage 16.5 is compatible with AutoCAD 2013 to 2016. Um, it allows you to define horizontal slice at a defined level, as mentioned before. And um, I also already demonstrated the automatic polygon fitting tool uh, to you. What I did not demonstrate yet is uh, the one-click plane and the automatic rim tool for planar surfaces, but I will demonstrate them in, in a minute. And then I already demonstrated uh, the new image management tool that simplifies working in AutoCAD with many orientated images. Um, new in this version is also the Agisoft PhotoScan import that was a request by archaeologists and uh, people of, of um, historical preservation to include this import in our software. And then there are a few more uh, improvements and details which which I will uh, give you an idea as well. Um, so fit planes with just one single click um, helps you to create average planes even faster than with the previous tools we had. Um, so you can create planes for using them as construction aids as well as quickly setting the user coordinate system to them. It's nice to have this tool when I want to create an awful image from a point cloud, for instance. And um, with this tool, I also have an accuracy check um, because it also automatically creates a point cloud region, region and the name of that point cloud region also contains the standard deviation in its name. So let me demonstrate it how we can use this tool um, and together with the auto image tool. Um, let me switch to to the facade here. I've cropped that to the facade and um, what I like to do is fit the plane so it, this new command is hidden here and you can see there is this this the screen uh, thing is the search radius. I can set the search radius in the parameter dialog. I won't open this one. I just click to the point cloud and in a few seconds. Oh well, webinar transfer has slowed down slowed down this in here. So then we have the plane. If I turn off the point cloud. You can see the plane that has been created. And if I uh, um, turn and over here in, in the section manager, you can see that a uh, section has been created that shows us the points that that have been used to create uh, this this average plane. And here you can see the standard deviation, so it's within millimeters, and it's due to the noise of the points. Let me switch on the complete facade once more because why did I create this plane? I created it because I want to set the user coordinate system to that plane. And you can see that really the the Z axis now of the user coordinate system now points towards me. There's also improvement in the UC, UCS from plane command. Uh, formerly there were it could happen that we would watch from the back side of the facade to, uh, and now we improved it and we take into account the current uh, the current view of, of the viewport uh, to get the correct direction of the of the z-axis of the user coordinate system. Now uh, I want to create an awful image um, and new in, in version 16.5 is that, that I can not only create a, a 
an awful image of the point cloud uh, just by the RGB colors, uh, but I can also create one awful image that takes into account the visualization settings. So if I set uh, from RGB to the intensity uh, visualization style uh, and then run the auto image command, the auto image will be in those uh, in those rainbow colors of the intensity view. I can do some resolution settings for me just to keep the calculation a bit uh, faster for the webinar. I will select uh, five millimeters resolution and I will select this qubit plane I just created um, as image plane, set the boundary for the auto image and uh, it's going to be five millimeters and then I just hit create auto image and I will create a TIFF file and I will create it at my desktop webinar save and then it takes just a few seconds um, for the algorithm to calculate the auto projection to the image plane I've selected and uh, then you will see the result inside the drawing um, and uh, it's going to be in the colors of the intensity colorized point cloud now. So this is new. Um, previously, even if you had switched to intensity view, the, the auto image we created has always been in, in RGB colors, but now we can um, create those auto images with the visualization style which that we selected in AutoCAD. So here we've got the new auto image colorful. All right, we have a few more um, new functionality in Points and Heritage. One of them is the option to automatically find the rim of a planner face uh, with just one single, single uh, click in the point cloud plane. We have the option to either create uh, the, a plane or just the outline the bounding polyline of the plane so we can create it very fast and uh, we can also use it as um, surfaces for, for drawing on and for modeling. Um, and to quickly create plan drawings. Um, we have here, I will show you another example. Um, um, I have here a drawing with with a freestyle scan from from a wooden staircase, and uh, rather than digitizing the outline of this plane, top plane here manually, I will run just run the new command for uh, creating the automatic rim. Um, um, Again, here I can turn on uh, parameters. I can set the search radius for that tool. I can also um, set a smoothing tolerance that's for the outline. And I want to create just a 3D polyline. I hit OK here. And uh, then once more, I need to turn on the object snap. node of point cloud. Just refreshing here. So that's strange. I think you just need oh, to yes. choose the Okay, I, I just need to check the automatic plane option in here. Um, and uh, actually it should show the, the search radius in here. Yeah, I'll turn on the snap. Yeah, I did it. 
already. I have turned it off. Oh, sorry, my fault. Um, <laughs> okay. I did turn it on. Now, now you can see the green uh, um, search radius around my point snap, and when I click, uh, the algorithm will take a few seconds to to find automatically find the boundary um, in here. Still not complete yet, adjusting it um, a few times, and there we get the outline. If I turn off, um, if I turn off the point cloud, you can see uh, the outline that has been found. So I think that gives you an idea how you can quickly um, generate outlines of planar faces with points and heritage. Um, there are a few more improvements in details. Um, we improved, uh, we added an offset uh, option to the insert point cloud tool. Um, that's for users who registered their scans in large coordinates, like uh, in geodetic um, coordinate systems. Um, you can, during insertion of the point cloud, you can move those to closer to the origin in order to prevent um, uh, problems with processing at large coordinates that AutoCAD sometimes has. And uh, the recurve imp photo import has been re revised a little bit. Um, in the auto photo um, tool, we have added a, an option to use um, the point cloud information in addition to, to the photographs. Uh, previously, it was the way that um, the point cloud information has always been used to fill the gaps between the photographs, if there were gaps between the photographs. Um, this was not what, what all our users wanted, so they asked us to make it optional. So now you can turn this off, option off and, and create the author photo just from from the photographs without filling gaps by uh, point cloud colors. Um, another uh, improvement, minor improvement was done to scan navigation, so it's now automatically isolating the scans when switching to the scan navigation, so we really cannot snap any false points. Um, I already mentioned that uh, UCS from plane has been enhanced. Uh, using the current view information. Flatness analyzes also now uses the current view information for the alignment of the text of the deviation grid. And uh, um, we added a new uh, command for creation of rotated arc plans. That was also a user request. This uh, tool comes originally comes from our total station software, Tachicad. Um, um, so we added it to points and heritage on user request, and it's meant to draw 3D arcs into the 2D plan. This is a, a requirement usually in in, in cultural to cultural heritage drawings. Um, I don't know if if it's a um, uh, condition for uh, worldwide, but but in Germany we in, 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 in Austria and Switzerland, we do have this um, requirement for uh, ground plans of historical buildings. So that's why we included this tool in Points and Heritage. And um, I already mentioned those um, um, enhancements in the author image tool, taking into account the um, current view, so we don't have an author image from the backside of our facade, but from the front. And uh, as mentioned, we are using now the, the colors of the visualization settings of AutoCAD. That's all uh, that I wanted to show you and tell you about Points and Heritage. Um, I'm now here to, to answer your questions live, but if you have uh, uh, questions later on, you can send them to info at faro-3d-software.com. And please note that there are uh, also some uh, tutorial videos on our uh, YouTube channel.